That's going to give us some good height at the back. Right, two things I messed up here. Well, I have got down here some amazing pieces of gnarled manzanita wood. And I've just seen these rocks here. I just asked her if I could take them. And you know, Buddha's just sat up there, happy, as you'd expect. What's going on guys and welcome to another MD Fish Tank build video. So behind me is a three foot aquarium, well not that way, that way, three foot aquarium that I've been planning for ages to be for the goldfish, my fancy goldfish that I've got. Now it has just been a plant storage tank, that is soon going to change. I was at one of my local garden centres and I saw a really cool statue. Now I'm not sure if it's going to be safe for the water or not so I need to just put it in for now and then test the water afterwards and just see if it's changed any of the parameters drastically or not. I'm thinking it might do. And if that is the case, I can seal it with epoxy resin, but if not, we're all good. Okay, so well, excuse the state of my boot. Soil, brilliant. Right, this is the statue I'm talking about. So it's a good size look. I think it's made from concrete. I'm not entirely sure. Let's just get it in that water and have a look. As said, it's still being used as like a plant storage tank, but that won't be for long. But I think it'd be a good idea just to leave all the plants in because that's what it's going to be like with the statue in there as well. So if I put them in, put it in like this with some polystyrene underneath because I'm a bit worried about that glass. It's quite heavy, you know, struggle to pick it up one handed. So yeah, I'll get it in there, leave it for like a week or two and just see what it does to the water parameters. I'll test before and after to make sure we're okay. Okay, that already looks pretty cool. Yeah, so I've taken some water samples there, do a little bit of testing. We can monitor the pH then and we can just see if the concrete's leaching anything into the water that would cause it to drop or change in any sort of way. So we'll give that a couple of weeks, come back, see how it's doing. So it has now been two weeks. Let's do a little water test and see if anything's changed. Hopefully not, and then I can just crack on. Right, so we've done two tests with both ranges, the high range and the low range, just to be sure. And the normal sort of range, not low, normal range, is showing that we're pretty much bang on seven. The high one is, yeah, not even registering, so that's all good. That tells me the water's all good and we can crack on with the build. I mean, another clue would be the fact that all these plants are just still doing really well after several weeks. They're just growing all the way out the top. Frog bit as well at the back there, just spread, yeah, <laughs> not affecting the water. So this light is actually really affordable guys. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, it's great power for the pricing as well. So what I've done is just loop the power lead over the top and just used a little bit of electrical tape to tidy it up. It's all black, ties in nicely. And then the cable runs this way. Now it's quite short cable and would have had to have gone straight down. Well, I didn't want to see it behind it. So I've extended it, run it across here and then just sort of clipped it here with like a suction cup. And you can see that does quite a good job. I mean, when the tank is filled up, you won't actually see that bit of the side anyway, because look, when you look through side panels, you can't see anything. So yeah, that's why I've done it like that. Looks a bit odd now, but be fine when the water's filled up. Now the next job is to create our substrate system and base layer. Now I wanna have some height. I wanna come up to about a third of the way. No, that's a bit, just under a third of the way. And to do that, I'm gonna use these little media bags that I've got here and just pack them full of crushed lava rock like I usually do. That'll create some height in the background. Now these are made of plastic. The whole thing is even the zip, so nothing will rust at all. So we're all good there. Okay, cool. That's going to give us some good height at the back there. Now, you don't have to use crushed lava rock. You can use pea gravel or any sort of gravel you want, really. But crushed lava rock really does offer the, the greatest amount of surface area, which means that bacteria can colonize it as well. So it's just going to add as, an, as another sort of layer of filtration, if you like, along with our canister filter. But like I say, if you can't afford a ton of crushed lava rock, I've used gravel myself before, pea gravel, whatever gravel, just, just get it in there.
All right, there we go. Aqua soil on top of the lava rock. So none of this stuff is gonna be actually planted into, obviously, because it's in a bag, but the roots will be able to still penetrate and get into there. On top is where we put all of our sand and sort of finer gravel, coarse sand, that sort of thing. And that's what we plant into with root tabs in. So I'm using this just at the back for sort of building it up, but also you get all the goodness that you get from soil and all the sort of surface area that you get from the uh, lava rock. Now, the reason that I bagged it all up is because the fish that are going in here like to stay stir up the sand layer and I'm worried that it'll just be an absolute mess within like weeks if I don't do this. So now on top we can just put the same kind of sand and gravel all over and it doesn't matter if they dig any up then. It's the goldfish, obviously the goldfish I'm talking about. Now they don't deliberately dig stuff up but they're big fish and sometimes when they swim about it can just waft sand across, you know. That's why I won't be putting too much in the foreground but allowing it to grow if you like, just like we've got over here on this aquarium. Right, we're ready for some sand or gravel. Now this is too coarse and too dark, this is too light and too fine. So I'm just going to combine the two that will lighten that and that'll be a sort of good color I think that will go really nicely with the statue which is just sitting here watching all the shrimp. Oh, well would be Right, two things. I messed up here because I banked it so high at the back that I forgot about putting the Buddha in and it would be sat out the top. So I'm gonna remove some of the bottom layers so it can sit in and then still push the sand back over the top. Man, we need a good inch or an inch and a half of sand or gravel to be able to plant the plants into, otherwise they'll just float up out. So yeah, he's probably gonna be sort of sank into the, the sand or gravel so it comes up just above the feet area there. Right, there we go, sorted. The Buddha's just below the surface, which is ideal. Uh, it's all a little bit higher that side and that side. It's not gonna matter. Loads of this will all get moved around as we add stuff in. Now, what we're gonna use for hardscape? Well, I have got down here some amazing pieces of gnarled manzanita wood from Aquarium Gardens. I've had them set around for a while now and I just couldn't wait to use them on this scape. I might just start putting a few pieces in and just see how they look. It's always the best way, just, just get going. Don't over plan and overthink. Get the wood in there, see how it sits in that size tank with whatever other piece you've got. Yeah, just give it a go. Right, so I know this isn't gonna to be to everyone's taste and the scape looks a little bit unorthodox. Now, it will actually come to life and look correct in my eyes uh, when I start planting it. So I'm trying to give the impression that there is like life coming out of the Buddha and it's exploding from that point. Your eyes can be drawn to the Buddha straight away and then come out and I'm trying to do that with the scape as well. Again, sometimes hardscapes can look a little bit strange about plants and it was the same with my Amazon Aquarium. and everyone was like, oh, I wasn't sure about the hardscape, but then you planted it as well. You know, you gotta try and see the end result before you've even created it. And that really sort of helps you sculpt a tank as you're doing it. I never follow a strict plan. I just have an idea and just let it come natural as I build it. So that's the wood for the most part done. We can tinker with it as we go, but I want to put the rocks in now. I've seen some that I like. Now they're at my mother-in-law's house <laughs> as part of her driveway. Hopefully she'll let me take them. Let's go get them. So I'm outside my mother-in-law's house and I've just seen these rocks here. I just asked her if I could take them. Initially she said no and I've convinced her she's going to let me. So I might use these. I'm not sure yet. Okay, we got the rocks. She let me have them. Let's put them up in the aquarium. Okay, so I only ended up using two of the big boulders. Any more than that, it's gonna look crazy. They're already quite like sort of massively impactful, but I want that sort of randomized look, kind of like the Buddha's just in its own little nat natural temple that's crumbled away and is still there. 
Oh, it's cool. It's a cool concept, I think, anyway. Right, so next, I can put like smaller pebbles all around it now for detail. Not too small to start with, but grading out as we go. excited about this one so you notice that these colors are completely different to anything else that's deliberate I wanted to stand out a bit a little bit of like interest and I think they all have the same sort of pastel tones uh, you can see them working well together I, I think it looks really cool like I said to you guys before there's no point in just continuously doing the same thing we might as well try new things and I think that looks pretty new and spectacular but what we need to do now is find even smaller pebbles just to go in all these gaps as well I want to have a lighter pathway come up the middle that's why it didn't matter really about all this gravel around the outside because you're not going to see much of it anyway there'll be a pathway leading up to the buddha and also it'll be lots of plants dotted in everywhere i mean come on it is a forest it needs a lot of plants Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Now all that's left is for the sort of lighter dusting of a, a white, not white, but you know, lighter sand. It's almost white up that central path. Not like covering completely, but just dusting and highlighting that area. Yeah, I have to say, guys, I'm massively happy with how this has turned out. And I'm so glad I went for different colours as well. I think now that it's all in together with all the details, I think you can see what I was going for. It looks so, so good, doesn't it? Like, you've got the real weathered look of these stones. And then it kind of looks like these have been dragged down by some sort of river flowing down the middle pathway. Oh, yeah, brilliant. And, you know, Buddha's just sat up there, happy, as you'd expect. <laughs> life just exploding out of it i mean we've got so much more to come obviously in the next video i'm going to be planting this bad boy so make sure you're subscribed for that one you don't want to miss it i'm still currently waiting for some plants to arrive so i've got a load down here all ready to go and also a load down here in this storage tank and then a load down here as well in this storage tank and also could be able to take trim ins from anywhere i want to as well but that is the end of this vlog guys and as usual if you've liked this video hit the like button hit the subscribe button and i will see you on the next one